Hello everyone and welcome to Blue Tengu's live game development show where we show everything that goes into making a game from concept to completion. Uh, if you've ever wanted to make a game, we hope this will help lower the barrier to entry and maybe give you the nudge you needed to try it yourself. Uh, and even if you didn't want to make a game, we hope you'll uh, find some value in what we're doing here. All of the information about where you can find us is in the Twitch info down below or uh, in our YouTube profile for those of you who are catching us later. But just in case, we're at uh, www.bluetengu.com, btengu on Twitter, facebook.com, bluetengu studio, youtube.com, bluetengu studio for those of you watching the live stream, and Twitch TV, bluetengu for those of you who are watching this later on YouTube. Uh, if you mess missed the last two episodes, you can catch them over at YouTube, but you shouldn't have any trouble following along, even if you haven't seen them. For those of you who haven't seen the show on Twitch or YouTube before, uh, my name's Eric, and I'm a game designer living over here in Japan, and who's trying? I'm trying to show you everything that goes into making a game for about two hours a week at this time, uh, including all of the ums and ahs and awkward debugging moments, one of which I'm proud to say we had last episode. Uh, the reason I'm showing it all, as opposed to making the game first and scripting out a rehearsed tutorial, is because I want to uh, lower the barrier people feel about making a game, and I hope inspire you to go out and try it. Uh, the problem with a tutorial is that once the teacher knows how to do something, uh, unless they're one of those rare natural teachers, they start skipping things, leaving the people watching confused. Uh, making the game live also helps me too, because having made the promise to do the show two hours a week at the same time means I have to make the game two hours a week at this time. Uh, in other words, I've left myself with no excuses, and creating a consistent schedule is the way to get things done. Uh, thank you to Mito and everyone last week for making some great suggestions. I'll also do my best to fix some bad habits of mine I uh, had the pleasure of noticing when editing the video for YouTube. Uh, one of those bad habits is leaning way too close to the camera, as if I'm like Sadako or Samara from Ring getting ready to crawl out of the telly, uh, you know, into your living room. So let's... I'll try my best not to do that. It's a habit, but I will do my best to break it. Uh, another one is just looking down at the keyboard like this while I'm typing, and that's a harder habit to break because, you know, as web cameras work, they're always on either on top of the monitor or below it, so you either get uh, me looking down or you get this massive, like, view of me, you know, my face from down below, and that's no good. So I'm keeping it on top, but I'll do my best to not look down too much. Uh, the third bad habit I noticed is bouncing around like Winnie Pooh's Tigger in my chair. Uh, if you're watching this live, uh, feel free to drop suggestions or ask me uh, questions at any time. I may not be able to answer them right away because I will be working here and my uh, chat feeds over on a notebook to the side, but I will check it from time to time. Uh, I may not be able to answer them right away, but I'll try to get to them, and if I can't, uh, you can send me a private message here, leave a comment on our site or YouTube video, and I'll do my best to address it next time. Uh, by the way, if any of you are out there making something and you don't mind showing it off, uh, send me a link to your stuff. I would like to see it. Okay, so let's get into the game right now. As you can see from the title up there, I'm working on the game Project Spaghetti, which is a top-down 2D cowboy shooter where the bullets fired bounce around the screen. Uh, with a pinball mechanic. In the first episode, I planned it out, and in the second episode, which was last week, I managed to get a few tasks ahead of schedule and got a rough, rough, rough looking cowboy player into Game Maker, uh, the game engine I'm using, with basic eight way movement in a rough, rough town background, and the very beginnings of the shooting mechanic. Uh, those beginnings consist of pushing a button and a bullet appears and goes down. So, uh, enough talking. Let me fire it up and show you where we are so we can get started. Okay, so fired up Game Maker there. Um, let's see, the project here is Project Spaghetti, so let's open that up. Let's minimize that since I don't need that. And just keeping it kind of in the corner there so I can at least see what's going on. 
in the stream, but uh, this is the Game Maker interface, and if you want to see how far I got last week, let's just run this thing really fast. So it's intentionally very low resolution uh, on a modern monitor. Uh, it's 320 by 200, I believe. Um, but on a modern modern monitor, that's really really tiny, as you can see. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way, I explained it a little bit last week, but um, what I'm planning to do to get that pixely look is to draw everything, you know, for 320 by 20 first, and then just basically increase the size while keeping everything in perspective, uh, proportion so that it kind of keeps that pixely look. Right now it looks kind of smooth, but that's because it's 320 by 200. So I've got it tied right now so that you can move the character. There's no animation or anything like that. Um, move up, down to the corners and all that. And I think I tied the gun to the space bar. Nope. Control? Control. Control key. It just basically makes a bullet appear in the middle of the screen and go down. So that is what we will be working on fixing today. Uh, going over to the Trello site. Uh, Trello.com is where I keep all of my uh, tasks. And the reason I'm keeping them all here instead of, you know, what I recommended before, which is putting it on post-it notes on your wall or whatever, is uh, just so you can see it. Uh, if I have a bunch of hand-scrawled post-it notes on a wall somewhere in this tiny Japanese apartment, you're not going to be able to see what they are, or what I'm doing, or where I'm going. So even though it's a little bit more work, I do use, uh, I am using Trello.com. It does have one nice plugin for, you know, the task thing, which is like a burn down chart. I think it's called Scrum for Trello. If you pick up that plugin, you can just automatically type in like these number figures that you see, and it'll kind of count it up for you. So since, you know, we're running two hours and I've got a little chat at the beginning and in the end, I figure about an hour and a half worth of tasks is about right for, uh, for an episode. So, uh, first task I've got up there is uh, player action shoot scripting, which is, uh, you know, the very beginnings of firing a bullet I got in last week, but I actually have to make that bullet look like it's coming from the player at least, you know, where, depending on the player location, the bullet has to come out. And I have to, you know, have the bullet fire in more than one direction. Shouldn't be too bad. But it will take a little bit of time to get it right. So I do have it estimated an hour. I hope it won't take an hour. Uh, then once I'm done with that, the next step will be to have that bullet not just fly off the screen, but to actually get the starting of that pinball mechanic by having the bullet actually bounce off the edge of the screen. Uh, right now it's at half an hour. It might actually take a little bit longer because you know, if the bullet just bounces straight back, that's not going to be very interesting. And I think in the end, I'm probably going to want to make the uh, sides of the screen maybe wave a little bit so that the bullet has more, you know, more interesting movement when it's in play. But let's move that action shoot scripting over to in progress. And jump back to Game Maker. So... Let's see, that bullet is an object that I created last week. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, Game Maker does make game making very simple, you know, compared to even like Unity and things like that. You don't have to do a lot of scripting. Most of the stuff is just, you know, this action-based system where you basically pull these, you know, GUI icons off from the right, pop it in, and just get your game going that way. Uh, the reason I'm using Game Maker, some of you might already know, but uh, the reason is just because it is a 2D top-down game, so I figured, you know, use the tool. That's going to make that simple. So, uh, right now, the bullet, when it's created by that action, the pressing the control key, it just jumps to a ran random position. Right now, it's the middle of the screen, which I'm going to want to fix. Uh, and then it takes where the player is facing. Right now this PL face vertical, if it's minus one it's facing down. Uh, let's see, no. If it's minus one it's facing up. That means the player is facing up. If it's zero, the player is not facing up or down. And if it's one, the player is facing down. Same with the player face horizontal here. If the player is facing left, it's minus one. 
middle zero, right one. So as you can see, I've got all of these, you know, if he's if the cowboy's facing left, if he's facing the middle, but I don't have anything filled out. The only one I have filled out is this one down here, which is if they're facing down and they're not facing left or right. And it sets a horizontal speed, sets the vertical speed to two. The horizontal speed left, right, obviously, since the player's not facing left or right, there's no speed on it. And the vertical speed is 2, which means to go down 2. Uh, Game Maker's coordinate system has you know, 0 at the top, basically. The lower number's at the top, and then it gets bigger as it goes down. So I think the first step will be to try and have that bullet at least reflect the player's direction. So let's do a little copy and pasting here. So if the player is facing left, I'm going to want it to go left. And this is in the case that the player is facing up. So I want it to go up. And let's copy and paste that here so I don't have to do it every time. The only thing I should have to change is horizontal speed. Next is if the player is not facing up or down. And that's that's left, that's fine. Vertical speed, no vertical speed. Now here's a special case. If the player's not facing up, down, left, or right, uh, we don't want him to just you know commit suicide and fire the bullet into his own face. So we're gonna have the default be fire down. In general, this should only apply if the players ver uh, first started to move in the game, so it shouldn't come up too often, but it's worth putting in there. Right, and not up or down. Uh, this is the case where he's facing down. That's fine. That is not fine. And that's what we set last week. Set. And down. Okay. So now if I fire up the game, it should... The bullet's direction, at least where it flies off, should reflect where the player is pointing. Uh, that default case is still down, but if I face left, obviously there's no animation or anything, so it's really hard to tell, but he's facing left now because I moved him left. And that is not working at all, so we need to start debugging. Let's see. Okay, well, that's pretty obvious why that's not going going to plan here. Uh, basically, to get this thing tested last week, I guess I just set the variables right off the bat to just fixed amounts. So obviously, these don't change. So the bullet's always going to go going to go in the same direction. I need to fix that now. So let's see. One. Two, three, four, zero, one, two, three. Okay. I had this player direction here. I may not use it in the end, but I might use it for animation. This is a different variable. This was just, uh, if you're thinking about it in terms of a clock, if player direction is zero, he's facing up. If it's one, it's up to the right. If it's two, it's to the right. And as you can see here, the default is four, which is down. So I'm going to need to change that. Oh, when the player is first created, these are fine for defaults, but 
once he starts moving, I want to change these things. Now there's going to be some logic involved in changing this player direction to the proper amount, so I'm not going to worry about that one for now since I'm not using that variable at all at the moment. I'm just going to worry about vertical and horizontal. But just to keep it as a reminder that I do need to do something with it, I'm going to leave it in here. So when the player hits, presses left, I need to change the horizontal direction. to be left. When it's up, horizontal doesn't change. The vertical changes to minus 1. When it's right, vertical doesn't change. Horizontal goes to one, which is right. When it's down, horizontal doesn't change and vertical is down. So that should give us a direction. Now there's going to be something tricky here, which is the corners. I do have it set to change horizontal and vertical, but if I have it where the player is going straight up. That means he should be facing up. You'll see the problem. I'll show it here. So let's go to the lower right and see what happens. Fine, the bullet fires to the lower right, which is great, which is what we wanted. Uh, the problem is because when I move up or down, I'm not reset resetting the horizontal at all. If I start to move uh, let's see, up, it's going to fire up and to the right because it remembers the right, and if I go down, it'll fire low, down and to the right because it remembers the right. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. I may have to do a separate bit of scripting to handle direction instead of the keyboard thing, because basically I need to remember the last directions faced. So let's take a look at this. So left definitely needs to change the horizontal value. But let's see if the last direction was only left. Hmm, it might be worth creating another variable. There's probably a more efficient way to do this, but I think at least this way, at least the way I'm doing it, going to do it is at least surefire. So I'm going to, let's see, press left. So if you go, if the player presses up without pressing left or right, then I want him to shoot up. So let's create some simple things here. these zero when he starts so it doesn't remember them. Now 
Okay, so this will reset that variable to zero every time, so it's only going to remember the last thing that happened. Now, what do I need to do next? Let's see. If I add a step thing here, Begin step. Hmm. I wonder if it would go in order, because left, up, right, and down are all going to be there. We'll see what happens. In fact, let's create a little bit of logic. Because the problem is, you know, if I handle the processing for the left key first, well, if I can move this right, are all these handled at the same time is the problem. Well, let's see. I might end up with a mistake, but I'm going to try to do this without using a step now just to see what happens. If anything, it'll at least tell me the way Game Maker works a little better. So if I'm going to add a little bit of logic into this actual key press and see what happens, I doubt very much it's going to work, but we'll see. So I'm going to add, if the player is facing up, that's boolean. If an expression is true, oh yeah, okay, player up is equal to 1. Then, what do I want to do? No, actually, I wonder if you can use ands. Player up is zero. Ah, let's just make it easy. Let's put two ifs in here. So if the player is neither pushing up or down, hmm, it's not letting me add something for some reason. There we go. Okay, so if it's if up is not true and down is not true, then I want to set player face horizontal. Uh, vertical, I mean, to zero. And I want to do this exact same thing in the right key. And I kind of want things to be in the same place. That way it's easier to debug later. Okay, that handles the vertical case, so let's handle the horizontal case now. Definitely likes to put it at the beginning. It's not very helpful in that way. So this time it's, I want to check if right is zero and left is zero. And 
if they're both zero, I want to set horizontal to zero. And I want to do that exact same thing for the down key. Okay, well, let's see what happens with this. It may actually work, depending on the way Game Maker processes things. So I've got my default pressing down, <clears throat> well, facing down. Bullet fires down, that's fine. Now if I move up into the right, it should fire up into the right. Okay, I've obviously got something going on here where it's not wanting to fire to the left. But I can worry about that later. Okay, so now I've got the problem that if my last direction was up and to the right, it's still zeroing that out, which is no good. <coughs> hmm. Now that is interesting. Let's see. If it's up to the right. Shouldn't be having a problem there, but let's dig in. Let's also check this to make sure that my code is fine for the bullet. Uh, none of those left things were working, so if player face horizontal is equal to 1, that's right, so I'm going to look at minus 1. If player face horizontal is equal to minus 1, then I want to set the horizontal speed to minus 2, that looks fine. So it's probably the player stuff that's causing the problem. Oh, well, this, well, that's fine. We can player left, up, down, right. So that's being reset. So I don't want to do that. I want to do it here. That might have just been the only problem. Okay, there we go. Okay, that was the only problem, thankfully. Uh, the other problem is that it doesn't want to fire anywhere but to the right. And that's probably, that's what I was kind of expecting might be the problem. And I'm guessing, yeah, because right's probably overriding the left. Player direction to four. Player left to one, horizontal speed, that's for the player himself. Oh, well, that, yeah, that's a problem. I'm not, I'm not working with speed, I'm working with just what direction he's facing, so that's probably where I went wrong there. Okay, well that was actually pretty easy to debug. I had put a minus 2 in instead of a minus 1 because I was thinking about the bullet. So now it should be just fine. Okay, up's not working the way I expect. And I've still got the problem in the end that Things are getting overwritten. So I'm suspecting these aren't hitting properly. Well, it makes sense because I got rid of the stuff at the begin step. So, yep, uh, looks like I am going to have to pull this out of here. because I think the problem is that this left, up, right, and down are either being computed in order or they're overriding each other because they're all kind of happening at the same time. So I can't put my testing logic in there. And they don't give me anything for up, left, or anything like that. So let's try adding a step. C 
so get rid of all that stuff that I had in there. Uh, at the beginning, the ho that's the player's speed, so that's fine. So I'm going to need to have a way to determine whether up was pressed at the same time as right and determine direction from there. So if up was pressed at the same time as right, this player up should be one, player right should be one. So I'm going to have to create something for probably all eight conditions in this step part. All right, well, let's give it a shot. Go over here, start our condition. First off, if the player is facing left, and if the player is facing up, if they're up and left, then I want them to face left. And up at the same time. And let's see, if he's not facing up, there's two possibilities. He could be facing nowhere or he could be facing down. So I think I want to create an if uh, and else here. So if he isn't facing up, then he's either facing down or to the middle. And since the only thing I can test is down, I'm going to put that here. Down equals one. So if he's facing down, And the only thing that's really different is that this player face vertical is going to be down. Horizontal is still going to be left. And then I need another else after this one. Which simply says he's neither facing up or down, but he's facing to the left. So left is fine, I just need to reset this to zero. And I get to copy and paste this four times. No, three times. Well, let's see, I've got to do the same kind of thing. If they're facing left, if they're not facing left, they're either facing nowhere or they're facing to the right. So I do need an else on this, because otherwise things will get weird. And start that block off. And I need if. So if they're not facing left, then they could be facing right. So I have to check that. And if they're facing right, I have to do the same things I did in here. In fact, instead of copy and pasting, which will screw me up, I'll just do this the hard way. So I think it'll be easier to avoid mistakes that way. So if they're facing right, then the first thing I want to do is test if they're facing up. So player up equals one. So if they're facing right, and if they're facing up, right is 1, up is minus 1. And if they're not facing up,
then there's two possibilities. Are they facing down? If they're facing down, then this vertical has to be 1. So that's got me covered for le facing left and right. Now I've got to have when they're facing nowhere. Let's see, that means I need to pair an else with this. The way GameMaker does these blocks is going to make it very difficult to debug this kind of stuff. Usually if you're working with like a scripting or a, a coding, you know, language and you have like a fancy editor, usually what it'll do is it'll tell you, you know, if you click on, you know, one of these opening things like a start of block or end of block, you know, curly queue or whatever it is, when you click on it, it'll show you what pair it belongs to. GameMaker's not doing that, so, you know, when you're looking at all these down arrows for ending all of these if statements, it's going to be a little bit tricky because you don't know, you know, which uh, if statement these things are paired with. It does do indenting, which is nice, but yeah, I'm sure debugging crazy if else statements is not going to be fun in the future, but that's part of the fun of this. So if they're not facing left or right, then they're facing the middle. And if they're facing the middle, I've got to check two things again. Are they facing up? If they're facing up, they're not facing left or right, so that goes to zero. And if they're facing up, that's minus one. And another else. And another if. If they're not facing up, they could be facing down, so let's test that. If they're facing down, then we want to set these things. Horizontal is 0, and vertical has to be 1, which means down. And I've got that one final case, which is if they're not facing any direction, which means I think it has to be paired here. They're not facing up or down, so the last condition is they're not facing left or right or up or down. So all of these should be zero. Okay. Now the fun thing will be to see if this step actually works the way it should. They don't have a comment out feature, do they? <laughs> I'm sure they do, but worry about that later. Let's see, player up, player right, horizontal. Actually, let's get rid of these two. I wanted to leave them in as a reminder, but it's probably just going to be confusing. So the only thing that key presses do now is change whether you know up is true or not, etc. So you know when you're not pressing up, there needs to be something that turns this down to zero. So at the beginning of the step, I need to add four of these things. Up is not being pushed. Down is not being pushed. Left is not being pushed. And right is not being pushed. So at the beginning of the step, it resets all of those to zero. And then depending on what the player is pressing, it'll be left, up, right, down. And then at the step, well, now I don't think I can do that because that's 
going to make it where it's not going to remember where they're last facing, which is no good. Hmm. No, I don't want to do that. Sorry about that. Let's change it so that, the, well, they're always going to be facing some direction in general. Hmm. If they let go of the keyboard, if they were walking left and they let go of the keyboard, the only information that tells us is that they're not facing right and they're facing left. So let's try that. Let's try making the key press reset this stuff. So if they're facing left, they're not facing right. If they're facing up, they're not facing down. If they're facing right, they're not facing left. And if they're facing down, they're not facing up. All right, let's see what that gets us. And I'm curious to see what that step logic is going to do here. The default is still shooting down. If I move a little bit to the right, nope, not working at all. Hmm. Now help, help. So if I'm pressing right. PL right is going to be 1. I don't have anything resetting those variables, so if I hit right once, PL right should be 1, and left should be 0. Did I just forget to put in some else statements? It's possible. Oh, this else might be paired in the wrong place. No? Wow. Debugging this would be a lot easier in a scripted language. So I guess there is an advantage to disadvantage to using a GUI game making program. So let's see if up, right is true, which is what we were doing. If up is not true, then it comes down here, and then down is not true, and there needs to be an else here. That was just missing. That might be the only problem. Kind of surprised I did it everywhere. Okay, that's fine for left. Now if they're facing right, they're either facing up, or they're facing down, or they're not facing either direction. If they're facing the middle, then they're either facing up. Oh, well, there's one bit of craziness. Okay, let's make this bigger so I can see the whole thing at once. So I've got left and up covered. It's one direction. I've got left and down covered. 
And I've got left and neither up nor down covered. And I've got right and up covered. I've got right and down covered. I've got right and neither up nor down covered. Now what is this? So oh, this is neither left nor right. Yep, yeah, okay, that's paired properly. So this is neither left or right, so middle and up, middle and down, and neither. Well, let's see what happens. That either fixed things or it's going to make things crazy. Okay, default behavior is still fine. Not facing any direction, push down, so I'm going to try pushing right. Bullet fires right, up. Bullet fires up into the right. That's no good. Wow. Okay, this is actually a really tricky problem. So basically, I end up in a state where I can only fire in diagonal directions. I mean, it's easy enough to make the code where you know, only if the keys are being held down does it keep track of direction, but that's going to make it really weird because you want, you know, something like, you know, old Robotron games and things like that, where whatever the last direction you were facing is the direction that it keeps. So that is making for an interesting debugging issue. Well, I guess there's a Game Maker flash sale. So for those of you guys who are interested in Game Maker, now is a good time to uh, go and grab it. Hmm. Yeah, how do I do this? I suspect it's part of that step logic as well as what I've got here. Because if I'm pressing up, it's really inconvenient that there isn't a way to test left and up at the same time. Because if I'm pressing up and to the right at the same time, I want him to face up and to the right. But then if I release those two keys, I want him to remember that I was facing up and to the right, which is a problem, a big, big, big problem. So if I'm pressing up and not left, I'm pressing up without pressing left. You know, it'd be interesting if there was a way to test, should I do key release? Should I add key release steps? Maybe that's the only way to do this. All right, let's try it that way. So if the left key is released, then I want left to be set to zero. This, this sounds right. That's probably why these events exist. Key release, right. Up. I guess I'm still fine with keeping, you know, left resets right to zero and up resets down to zero because those would be conflicting states and I don't think that would be good. You know, it's probably just a little bit of extra safety, paranoid safety, but I'll leave it in there for now. Let's see what this does. This should at least keep track of when I release a key. So if I'm, you know, down is still that. If I press right. Ah, this is getting trickier and trickier. Okay, so now the problem is, yeah, it's nice that I release the key, but if I release the key without pushing another key, 
then I don't want to change that to zero in that case. I huh. wonder if it's going to figure this out for me or not. I'm going to try something. So if the key is released and no key is being pressed, then do this. Oh, if no key is being pressed, then don't change this. So if a key is being pressed, then it's OK to change this. probably doing this the hard way. I'm sure someone out there is screaming at me right now to do it an easier way, but this is at least one way I know to do it. That should work. So now I need to create this variable that says if a key is being pressed. Okay, let's see what happens with that. Push down, shoots down, push right. Still no good. As long as I'm holding right, it's fine, but as soon as I let go, it goes down. So these steps are probably all happening at the same time, which is no good. Oh, there's also another problem. I'm not resetting that, so player key is always going to be 1, which is no good. So that might have been my only problem there. Let's see if that does the trick. Please be the trick. Down still goes down. Right shoots right. OK, there we go. Hopefully. I haven't tested all the directions yet. But... Yep. OK, so it remembers I'm facing up and to the right. I haven't pressed any other keys to change that. If I press up and shoot, doesn't want to shoot up. Well, that's fantastic, but hmm. yeah, something tells me it's just the way the steps are working. Things are overriding each other, like information is overriding each other. That's my suspicion. So, well, let's not do that. The horizontal speed of the player, that's fine. No key is being pressed at the beginning of the step. If the player presses left, then they're facing to the left, and they're pressing a key. That's the only information left tells us. Let's get rid of these just in case, as they should be worthless. So left, player left is one, key is one. If I release left, then left should get set to zero if a key is being pressed. Okay, that seems fine. If a key is being pressed, set up to zero. If a key is being pressed and I release right, set right to zero. Ah, okay, I see what's going on. The, uh, the problem here is if I press another key and then release the right key, then it's not going to trigger this release right event, which means it's going to never come into here. So 
since I need to grab some water, I'm going to think about this for a little bit and go on my power break here, or uh, my minute or so break here. I will be right back. The game we're making now is Project Spaghetti, uh, top-down 2D uh, cowboy shooter, uh, where the game, the bullets fired bounce around the screen with a pinball mechanic. And right now, for those of you who were watching this from part one, what we'll realize is that we are currently trying to get the game to remember the last direction the player was facing and fire the bullet in that direction accordingly. Uh, the problem right now is that um, if you press the right key and then start pressing the up key and then let go of the right key, then the way it's set up now is it's not going to realize that that right key needs to be set to zero. So I don't think this is actually going to work, but I'm just going to try it anyway. What I'm going to do is right now I have it have the events uh, divided up into a series of keyboard steps. Uh, in Game Maker, if you just use a keyboard event left, up, right, down, all that does is track whether the key is being held in that step. The release is actually the action of releasing the key. So I'm just going to try adding a key press event and maybe separating out some of that logic. So instead of setting player left to one here, I'm going to set it here. Instead of setting up here, I'm going to set it. Oops. Oh, I need to make an event for that. Key press up. I'm going to set it here. Instead of setting right here, I'm going to set it here. And instead of setting down up here, I'm going to set it here. So the moment left is pushed, left is set to 1. The moment left is released, it's set to 0. Um, and I probably don't need this if thing anymore. That will screw it up. So now, the moment the player presses left, it'll set player left to 1. The moment they release left, it'll set it to 0. Is that going to work? Well, let's see what happens. I suspect it won't work, but you can always hope for a miracle. Down, default still goes down. If I press right, still goes down. Yeah, as I suspected. As long as it's being held down, that's fine. But as soon as I release, it forgets. Is there just a generic keyboard event? Key press. Any key, okay. That's actually kind of useful if any key is being pushed, but then that'll include the fire button, which is no good. So I need to think about this a little more. Player key is set to one. Yeah, I definitely want this to be tied into something being held down. The player key should only be one if left, up, right, or down are being held. Right now I've got this complicated step which says if left is true and up is true, Hmm. 
do I need to add more logic into these steps as well? So if pressing up and if pressing up and left is not on or off, let's take a look at that game logic one more time here. So if I press right and I hold right, fires out just fine. As long as I'm holding the keys, fires out just fine. But as soon as I let go, it forgets that information. Now I don't want it to forget that information just because I let go. I want it to forget that information if I let go and pressed another key. So, Release left. Player left is set to zero. Uh, looks like I am going to need an if statement in here. As long as something's being held. The moment something else is pushed, I need to check all the keys. This actually seems like something that would be better to look up rather than figuring it out myself. I'm still working on player action shoot scripting, which I had at about an hour for a task, but direction. Now I don't want to find my way to a gas station. I want to remember remembering the player direction in Game Maker. Well, that's not very helpful. I will probably just have to look that up a little bit later. For now, I'm going to move this in-progress task back to the task list. I imagine that I have another hour left on it. And I'm going to go into creating the collision in the town because <clears throat> the thing that's not working is just the case if the players stopped. So if I'm holding right, it shoots right just fine. You know, up shoots up just fine, down shoots down just fine. It's just when I stop that things start to get a little weird. So since that's a special case, I'll worry about debugging that probably next week. One thing I should probably fix, at least for now, is the fact that these bullets, as they are, are just firing you know, out from the middle of the screen, which looks really weird. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Instead of doing jump to position, uh, 160 by 220, what I'm going to do is if the player is facing up and to the left, player, let's see, what is it, player dot X, I think, will give me the player's X coordinates. And since that player was, let's say, 26 pixels, let me just try. Let me just try minus 5. <clears throat> and the Y direction, since it's up and to the left. Let's try that. This is the case if the player is just a. Uh, Facing down, I believe, <clears throat> are facing up. So the x direction should just be the middle of the player. Let me just double check. Yeah, facing up. And then facing up and to the right, plus 5. 
uh, not facing up or down, but facing to the left. Not facing any direction, which, you know, as I said before, is just a default of shooting down. And if they're just facing right, then that should be plus 5. If they're facing down and to the left, oops, that's plus 5 because of Game Maker's coordinate system. And if they're facing just down, X should be just player X. Y should have the bullet appear below the player. What I'm doing now is basically deciding where the bullet appears. And using the coordinate system, I think player.x and player.y are what you use to get an object's location. So if the player is facing right, that means it should, um, right now, it's so that the bullet appears five pixels to the right of the player, and the player is facing down. So, if that doesn't give me a, a bug, it should at least spawn the bullet relative to where the player is. Okay, so up and down, because the player is pretty tall, the bullet spawns inside of the player, which is no good. So I will fix that really quick. Obviously this value needs to be a little bit bigger than 5 pixels. So I just need to fix those Y coordinates. That one's fine. <clears throat> Actually, I need that to be plus because there's the default is shooting down. Good thing I looked. That's fine. Plus ten. Plus ten. And obviously the fine-tuning on these is something we're going to do later after we actually get some animation into the game, because right now it's just a static player. But it feels kind of weird to have the bullet appear in the middle of the player, so I just wanted to fix that. Now at least it kind of looks like it's coming from the player. And I probably want to do one more thing with this uh, shooting mechanic, and that's to avoid the player just com shooting constantly. So, uh, when the control key is pressed, what I want to do is, if there's something in here to do it, and timing, set alarm, set timeline, time position, timeline, pause timeline, start timeline. I don't think those are what I need. What I need is probably the timing. So, let's see, set alarm, I think it's going to be over here, isn't it? I'll call it alarm zero, and what I'm going to have this alarm do is change it so that the player is not shooting. And every step, I'm going to add a condition. Let's see. If the player is shooting, I'm not sure what just happened to my if statement. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. If the player is shooting, then I want. to increment this shoot counter 
and maybe once every 15 frames is fine. I need that in there. So if the player is shooting, then I want to up update shoot count to plus one. If the player is shooting, then I want to check shoot count to see if it's reached 15 frames, which is about half a second. Actually, in Game Maker, 60 frames might be a second, but we'll find out. And I'll reset the shoot count to zero. And I'll reset the fact that the player is shooting to zero. And just to make sure everything is in order, I'll add an else to this if the player is shooting, just to reset this player shoot count to zero. Oops, I need to copy that. Just to make sure that I don't have some problem with the player not being able to shoot because he shot once. <clears throat> so now I don't want to just create an instance of the bullet every time the player hits the control key. So I'm going to add a little bit of logic in here. As long as the player is not shooting, the player can shoot. So let's see what that does. He'll shoot, stepping in event. Did I call this something else? That might be the problem. No, all that logic was in here. Oh, uh, I need to actually initialize those variables before they're used. Simple problem to fix. So, player shoot. By default, the player's not shooting because they just started the game. And by default, the counter is at zero. Okay, that should be the only problem with that. Nice to have a quick debug fix once in a while. Okay. So, unfortunately, it's not really working. So timers are probably not working the way I expect them to. Actually, the problem should have been that he fired one bullet and never fired another bullet again. Let's just go ahead and add set variable kill shoot to one in here. And I need to trigger this alarm. Do I need to trigger an alarm? Do I even need an alarm? Let's get rid of this thing. So I may not even need it because I'm using a counter in here anyway. Because every step at the beginning it checks, you know, if the player is shooting then add to the shoot count. If the shoot count's 15, then reset everything. So that alarm was probably screwing me up. There we go. So now I can only, no matter, even if I hold down the control button, I can only shoot every 15 frames, which makes this a little more realistic. Okay. So now that shooting mechanic is at least workable. So now I want to create some collision on these walls, which will bounce the object off. Now there's probably several ways to go about this. One would be to check if the bullet hits, hits the edge of the screen in terms of resolution which is fine, but I'm probably going to want to have other objects that it bounces off of anyway. So, let's see, what do I want to do with this? There's too many ways to go about it. And it makes it kind of hard to decide which way to go about it. 
should I create collision around the edge of the screen? Let's go ahead and do that. That seems like at least an easy solution for now. And it'll allow me to uh, adjust collision later. Like if I, because in the end, I probably don't want to just have a flat edge of the screen because it's not going to make much sense when the ball starts bouncing in weird directions. So I'm going to go into Photoshop here. And let's see. Go into Project Spaghetti. Actually, all that stuff's on my desktop, I guess. And I've got my town background here. So I have the, the proper size anyway. What I think I will do is, let's see. I could create one object that's just the size of this, but let's do something a little more interesting than that. I've got this tiny player sprite here. What I'm going to try and do is create a barrel. So getting rid of that. And also to keep with my Commodore 64 styling, I'm going to bring that palette in. Well, that's annoying. Okay. So, I'm going to make these barrels brown for now. Well, let's make them a darker brown. Then I'll give them a black outline, just so they stand out against the background. I'm going to jump my brush size down to just a pixel brush. And I'm going to give myself a grid. So I'm going to make sure this barrel actually fills this entire square. And as always, this is just rough art because I want to test the game. There's no point in overcreating something that might get replaced later anyway once I figure out that things are not working as expected. So that's obviously a very simple barrel. Probably more like a crate because it's not particularly rounded. And I'm going to go back into Game Maker and I'm going to add that sprite in. I'm going to call it just barrel. And I'm going to grab that thing I just drew. Collision checking. Yeah, automatic's fine. That's a, just a square anyway, so that should work. And I want to create a barrel object. And I want to use that picture I just drew. So now, in this room here, I'm going to add Ah, oh, the grid snapping is kind of annoying. Let's turn that off. I guess you can hold Alt to turn that off. Well, let's go ahead and snap it for now. Just to do this as a test.
just fill the grid in mostly with these things. And let's see, it does have collision, which is fine. Yeah. So now I need to create a collision event. Which game maker conveniently has one. So let's see, create a collision event with the barrel. If it hits the barrel, then I probably want whatever speed it had going to just reverse. I'm going to have to look that up since I don't know what that is in Game Maker. So, Game Maker, let's see, object speed variable. Google knows exactly what I'm looking for. It's called speed. So, as I suspected, object name speed to read the object speed. H speed, V speed. Okay, so H speed and V speed are the things I need. Close. So I just want to reverse its horizontal speed if it has any. And actually, I don't even need to name the object, so I need to reverse the vertical speed. Let me fix that. Because this might actually change other bullet speeds, which is not what I want to do. I want to change this bullet's speed. So if it collides with the barrel, it should reverse the horizontal speed and the vertical speed. If it doesn't have any vertical speed, obviously zero. You know, the reverse of zero is still zero, so that should be fine. Let's see what happens. There we go. Well, it's at least a nice, uh, nice start to have a pinball effect. Now, there is in Game Maker apparently a collision that does bouncing. But that is something I have never done before. Let's see, jump, move, collision. You would think one of these movement things would be the thing to do it. If there is indeed a bounce. Oh, that looks about right. Bounce against solid objects. That sounds great. Precise. Yeah, not precisely, probably. And against solid objects. So that may actually mean I don't need to use that. Let's see what this thing does. Apparently nothing. So, obviously bounce is not all it's cracked up to be. Bounce against solid objects if there's a collision. Is that what I'm doing wrong? Hmm. Move to contact. Bounce. Is this just a property? That it needs to have somewhere. Nope. Okay, well that's the next thing to look up.
how to use bounce against objects. It's an action that you can put in collision events, which is what I did. Uh, this action makes the current object, such as a ball that is constantly moving to hit the solid object, and go in the opposite direction. This will only work if the object he wants to bounce against has been ticked solid. Well, that's probably what the problem is then. So I need to make this solid. Interesting little quirk. So now the barrels are solid objects, which means this bullet should bounce off of them. There we go. Now what's great about this, instead of doing, you know, setting speeds and everything else like horizontal and vertical speeds, what I think will be great about this is if I start to make those barrels rounded or if I start to make different objects rounded, what it'll do is it'll probably take that information and start bouncing, you know, the ball, the bullet, I should say in a pinball-like fashion where it bounces off and keeps kind of the direction it had going. Uh, right now, because everything's kind of square, it's not very interesting. It just keeps bouncing back and forth. So, maybe I should try rounding those barrels off. Actually, I have a better idea. I'm going to go ahead and keep the barrel objects as they are, which is fine. Uh, I'll round them, but I'm also going to create, go ahead and create that border around the town square so it doesn't have to look weird with all these barrels around it. And it gets a little closer to what I want to do in the end, which is to have the ball kind of bouncing in, a, in an erratic pattern so the player has to do a little bit of work to dodging it. So, going back into Photoshop. First off, let's round this barrel, and it doesn't need to be so big. We'll see what happens here. it from scratch seems the easier way to do this. So let's grab my Commodore palette again. And make a rounded barrel. One, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and start it there. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Doesn't have to be exactly precise, but just so I get the general picture of what this thing's going to be like when it's rounded. Hmm. Let's see, let's make it look a little more rounded because the player is going to see the bullet bouncing off of this in crazy directions, so if it's a little too flat, it's going to be kind of weird. So let's go ahead and round it off a little bit more. So it looks a little bit more like a barrel anyway. Okay. 
Okay, I'll save that as my barrel. And save that out over the other graphic, and I'll bring that into Game Maker. But before I do that, let me open up that town background, create a new layer. Call it boundary. And I'll go with the old Commodore color here. And up my brush size a little bit here. Maybe to four. So now I've got a simple boundary. Uh, I'll export that as a different image. Hopefully to get it looking a little more like the ball should actually bounce off this stuff. And to create a little bit of variation, I'm going to create a little bit of a wave pattern here. because I want to see how this balance in Game Maker works, if it's going to do what I need it to do. Obviously, this wave pattern is going to play a lot into the gameplay, so it's something in the future that I'm going to have to be a little more careful with. But for now, I just want to see how this thing behaves. So there we go. We've got kind of a bumpy side, you know, think of it like parchment paper or something like that. It's fine to save this as town background because it's just a layer, but I will save the actual image that I've got going now as town border and see what this gets me. So I'll bring that in as a sprite. I wonder, do backgrounds have solid? Nope, backgrounds are indeed backgrounds, so I do have to bring this thing in as a sprite, even though it seems kind of weird to do it that way. And I want precise collision checking, because I want to have the ball bouncing in whatever direction is going on there. And I want to create an object border. using that sprite border, and I want to make it solid so the ball bounces. And I want to add that to my room. Let's get rid of these barrels. That's extremely weird that I can't just use the delete key on these things, but... Alright, well, I'll do this the hard way. So I did my barrel test, which is fine. Bullet bounce is just fine off of that stuff. Now, it's going to be a matter of putting that border in first. See if I can get it in the right place. It snaps in just nicely. And I will throw in... Actually, I do need to fix that. Let me... No, I don't remove them. Let me fix this barrel first. Reload the sprite so that it's actually a barrel. Do precise collision checking. The object looks like it's already updated for that, which is nice. Grateful they did that for us. And let's place a few of these around in here. If it lets me. For some reason it has... Oh, it was the barrel over here. Weird. Now I'm 
probably just creating all sorts of junk around this this room, which is no good. Let's undo some of this stuff. Let's not save the changes. Okay, let's try this again. I want a barrel. I want it in the middle of the map. For some reason, it puts it over here, which is weird, but I will go with it. I don't want to scale you. Probably even though that border has transparency, what's going on is it's seeing the border and not letting me put sprites down on top of it. There's probably a way to get around that, but I'm not going to worry about it. Seems like this thing's a little off, too. I won't worry about it for now, but I've got barrels and I've got a border and all of them should be solid. So let's save that and see what happens. Well, it's fine with the barrels, but it's not fine with the border. I have solid turned on. I have precise collision checking turned on. Maybe the whole thing, even though it's got alpha, No, it should be ignoring that. It looks like the collision mask is indeed that strange blue area because it seems to be copying it over pretty well. Precise collision checking, sprite border. Okay. And I am using sprite border here. It is solid. Uh, the mask is the same as the sprite. And kind of an interesting thing is I will be able to turn visible off if I do want to do that. Let's try this again. Bring that border in. Hmm. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. It seems like there is going to be a workaround for it, but didn't get to do it the easy way. The easy way would be if it bounces off this wall, but it seems to ignore that. The barrels seem to be working just fine. So it's just that weird border thing that's not working. So Game Maker does have a sprite editor. I guess that's one thing I should have done with the original image is actually resize it so that it's actually just the object instead of all this extra transparency on the side. That's kind of wasted space. So that's worth fixing. At some point. Let's see. Border. Separate 
collision masks. I wonder what that... I wonder what's going to happen if I turn that off. Let's see what that does. That does something, but it's not what I expected. Okay, well, I was hoping to do this the easy way, which would be to just have a border with a transparency in the middle and have it figure out the collision for me based on where those pixels are actually being drawn on the screen, but it appears that it's going to take a little bit more work than that. What I probably will have to do is actually create the four borders, but that's fine because in the end I probably do want to have that a little bit random. don't want to have the exact same thing every time, so being able to switch those out on some kind of random algorithm is actually going to be a good thing in the end. So that is something I will handle in the future. So I'll just get rid of that border for now because it's really distracting. And I'm not sure what this is. Should I just get rid of it? Sure. I'll get rid of that. Okay. So we're back to just our basic town with barrels and things like that. I should probably round off the sides a little more too so that it gives them more balance because right now they're flat. But there's probably even a better way to do that, which is to use an ellipse, if it lets me zoom in here. Let's see, is there a way to fatten that ellipse if I want it to be fattened? Manual. Right, 19, 20. That rounds it off a little bit. Three. Top, let's make that zero. Bottom, let's make that 20. So instead of using the actual image itself for collision, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fudge it a little bit with the ellipse here so that it's a little more random when the bullet hits it. So even though it looks flat, okay. Well, apparently the uh, bounce collision thing is not as precise as I hoped. So that's something I'll need to work on as well. But it's fine for now. So I'm going to wrap up here. So today, you know, what I had going was I had these two tasks, get the player action shoot scripting working. I did get it working, but I need to create another task, which is to keep track of direction. And since I had to fight that problem for quite a bit today, I'm going to go ahead and make that an hour-long task to get that working. And I'm going to put that in the task. And actually, to test that collision, I did have bumpers going. So instead of the town level create collision, which is, you know, something I'm going to have to work on with the... Uh, the borders and the you know the borders at the sides and whatnot instead of doing that you know I did the bumper barrels so at least I did test out the bounce action I'm gonna to need to fix that bounce action in the future so let's go ahead and add that task since that's something that came up Okay, and I did lay out the bumpers a little bit. So, you know, even though I didn't get my first task that I was planning to get done, 
completely done. I had to separate it out to another task, which is over here now. I did at least get the scripting shoot done. So move that over to done. I did draw a rough barrel, put it into the game. I did get collision around it, which responds to the bullet. And I did lay down some bumpers. So all in all, did get some stuff done. Didn't get as far as I'd like because of a few issues that I'm going to have to probably look up a little bit. So I don't just sit here, you know, spending too much time on it. But those are all the done tasks. But just to keep track of how much I did in the different episodes, what I'm doing is I'm moving them all into an episode. So as you can see, off to the side there. On our Trello site, I've got what I did in Episode 1, Episode 2, Episode 3. So if you do go to the Trello site, you can kind of follow along. If you're curious about, you know, one of these steps that's in here, you can jump to that episode over on YouTube, which is uh, youtube.com, Blue Tango Studio, all one word. Um, you can go over to our site, which is uh, www.bluetango.com. All the information is there. When I do post the video up on YouTube, for those of you guys who are watching this in Twitch, um, that post will be there, so it'll give you links to everything that you need to do, and it'll also have like subsections, as I've been doing for the past episodes, to show you, you know, you know where you want to jump to if you want to jump to it. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, sorry, I didn't get as much done as I wanted to. I did get things done, just not the things I expected to. So hopefully I'll uh, be able to fix some of that stuff next week and get to the next tasks. I think next week, what I do want to do is I definitely want to fix that player tracking problem. So actually, let's make a new one for episode four. Uh, let's see, I think I have to do it over here. So for next week's episode, which is episode four, I do want to fix that player tracking thing so that the bullet does fire from where the player last faced. And I do want to get some collision going around the town because I do want this to start feeling like a pinball game as soon as possible so I can start testing out that mechanic. Uh, to do that, I'm probably also going to need to fix this bounce response. So if I can get to that, I'll get to that. I suspect I will be able to if I can fix this uh, player action direction tracking problem. But since I don't want to overload the task list, what I have is 1.5 hours, which is about you know what's going to fit in a two-hour episode, give or take. If I do get through these tasks faster, I'll get to those. So, uh, again, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been, you know, Blue Tango's live development broadcast where we show all of the ums and ahs that go into video game development. Today, we definitely had plenty of ums and ahs because there were things that I was not expecting to be as difficult as they were in Game Maker. You know, it's supposed to be easy. You know, I've never really used it before, so all of this is just kind of a discovery process. And that's part of what the show is supposed to do to show you, you know, that not everyone starts out as an expert, you know, and as you discover things as you go, you get better, you figure things out, you know, you go a little faster as time goes on. And that's the whole point of this show. You know, the whole reason I'm not making a tutorial is because if I made a tutorial, like I said in the intro, I've already studied everything that needs to be done, and all I do is, you know, spit it out, which is fine, you know, if you just want to learn something, it's great to see a tutorial, but if you want to kind of see the process of learning to make a game or the process of learning to use a new piece of software, this is probably a format that will be helpful. And it's definitely helpful for me. Uh, thank you for showing up, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. If you want to, catch us. Catch us over at uh, www.bluetango.com or btango on Twitter. If you have questions, send me a private message on Twitch TV, uh, Blue Tango. Private message me, you know, Twitter, send me a tweet. Uh, set, post a comment on the web page, post a comment on YouTube, you know. Send, send me some feedback, give me some feedback, I'd love to hear it. Because it does help me, you know, improve the show a little bit. So, with that, I will say goodbye. Thank you for watching, and have a good... Uh, Friday night for those of you in the States, and a good Saturday for the, those of you in the rest of the world. Goodbye.